X mark. Hey guys, let's do a series. So do one, stop, do it again. Okay. 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 Y mark. And we're set. Okay. Action. The glory will rise again for Germany. Auf das Vaterland! Auf das Vaterland! Auf das Vaterland! Auf das Vaterland! Uh, I am shooting Werewolf Women of the SS, which is the shocking true story of the final days of World War II. Hitler's final moments in the bunker, trying to, you know, save the Third Reich. This film is a brilliant achievement in motion picture history. Finally, the truth about Hitler's diabolical plans to create a race of superwomen can be told. Werewolf Women of the SS. In Werewolf Women of the SS, you'll see hot chicks, sexy Nazi soldier men, and uh, blood. Lots of blood. It's the popular genre known as the sexy Nazi movie. You know, it's things like Ilsa She-Wolf of the SS, which is the one I think most people love. We're kind of in that vein. It's all based on true stuff, actually. I am Bill Mosley, and I am playing Dr. Heinrich von Strasser. You have been chosen. <laughs> Rejoice! I'm Tom Tolds. I play Lieutenant Borman. The she-devils of Belzac. I was called in to play a werewolf playing a piano in an officer's club while Sherry was singing in a dream sequence. Can they alone supply the blood needed to save Hitler's mad dreams? Or will the pride of Germany fall into ruin? This is my project. I have created uh, the werewolf women of the SS. But I have had some setbacks. And so I have been relieved of duty by the Belzac girls, Eva and Gretchen Krupp, played by Sybil Danning and Sherry Moon Zombie. Doctor, you have failed the fatherland. The crops are here by order of the fever. But uh, at least I've had a chance to really work over a couple of uh, semi-naked girls, which is what makes this work and this, actually, this career so rewarding. Watch in horror as Dr. Von Strasser searches in vain for the purest German blood needed to create this unstoppable army. <laughs> we got into it. I mean, maybe not to torture women, but, you know, certainly to meet some. And when they're, you know, when they're strapped to a table, I mean, they, they can't help but meet you, so. It's kind captive of a, audience. <laughs> captive audience, right. I have found the perfect solution to all of our problems. I'm an officer in the SS, and delight. I work with uh, Udo Kier, who is completely insane, I've discovered, and it works out well for everyone in the film that he is, because, in truth, Everyone who works for Rob has to be demented. I think it's a prerequisite. <laughs> Today was like coming here and just by choosing uh, the pants I have on, which you cannot see in the camera unless you uh, go down a little bit. This is a pants, which of course they did not wear, but it is kind of a, from a sex store, I guess, for some kinky people. It is latex or latex, how you say in America, and <clears throat> just this idea. When he had this idea, I said to him yesterday when I met him, I said, why shouldn't I wear a little corset like Pamela Anderson? Because I made a film with Pamela called Bob Wire, and I was so impressed by her body, by her whole presence of being blonde. And so I said yesterday, <laughs> I would like to wear this kind of, so I had to call around yesterday find some girl who could lend it to me, because normally I don't wear that. So, but maybe I will now. I think it gives you a good kind of <clears throat> hello. Originally, uh, they, in the script, it said that I was going to be wearing an SS uniform. Um, and then just at the very end, I found that it was supposed to be a more flamboyant character wearing a very, really Liberace-type outfit. I mean, he got a nightclub full of people in gas masks and a werewolf playing a piano looking like Liberace. I mean, what other world is that going to fit in but the world of complete imagination that came out of Rob's head? I have never seen in a film naked breasts and gas masks. Breasts on my left and on my right. 
it's wonderful to have close-ups together with uh, for uh, breast. And I've never seen in a film two high rank officer like Borman and Hess sit together very close, crying and having a handkerchief with the emblem of the skeleton and the bones. Rob had his producer write a, a German song, so it's an original song, and I had to learn it phonetically because I do not know German, so that was a challenge, and performing it was great. I, I had a wonderful time, and it was great to work with. Udo Kier and Tom Tolles um, and seeing them weep made me laugh and I had to try not to laugh while we were doing the scene. You know, I've worked with Rob for a long time and uh, it, it, the imagination never fails to uh, even take me by surprise, you know, because what he sees are these visions of sort of crazy things, you know, doctors' laboratories and girls chained up and, you know, Nazis and tanks and bikes and violence. And you sort of counteract that with the other side of Rob, which is the imagery that he takes from his rock music and puts into these things is, you know, it all seems to work out in the end. Of it. so it's like one big picture. I want to do something different. Um, can you introduce it on this side? It starts with trusting Rob and knowing that uh, as soon as you, you know, day one, you're going to go for it. He's got it under control, and uh, he is a really encouraging and great, uh, great guy to work with. Oh, actually, what could be better? We have a spare fire My approach was to take a totally serious approach because I, what, what I think doesn't work a lot of times for me is when people think, oh, I'm doing one of those campy type of movies, and to me that misses the point because that's not why they're good. A lot, well, those movies were good to me because people set out to give serious performances and serious films that just usually that the subject matter was insane. And that's why they're compelling to watch. Okay, let's shoot the rehearsal, come on. And the way I approached it was from day one, you know, with one of our actors, Udo Kier, who's like, Rob, how do you want me to do this? I was like, play it like you think you're gonna win an Academy Award. X mark. And that's what he's been doing. I mean, it's getting wackier and wackier, but he's playing it so serious and throwing everything into it. I entrusted. I gave you the honor to supervise my project. Its failure will be your demise and the end of Germany. You know, if he doesn't believe in the werewolf women, if this doesn't really seem real to his character, Commandant Hess, then why would the audience give a shit? They just become shit movies. And, you know, that's not what we're trying to do. I mean, I have respect for what these movies are, and I think that, you know, Robert and Quentin obviously do too, or they wouldn't be making such a huge extravaganza based around these types of movies. All right, guys, listen up. A quick safety meeting. We're going to be firing automatic weapon. Cameras are locked up. Nobody at all can be on the set while we're doing this shot. Sometimes I think people don't get it because to watch these movies at home on your plasma screen on DVD is sort of like, you know. It's the difference between going to a NASCAR thing and have a flaming tire flying into the crowd, killing people, or watching it on television. CO2! Action! Action! Got it! Got it. I think it's awesome. It's, I, I'm so excited to be part of it, truthfully, that um, I forget that I am. And by that I mean, like, I, you know, I saw the trailer for Grindhouse, and you think, like, fuck. I wish I was, oh, I am part of that. You know, because it, it is really exciting, and it's, so, it's such an odd movie and such an odd concept that it's being made in such a big way. And roll camera. It's really exciting, and I'm, I'm thrilled. I mean, for me, this is, you know, this is the way it should be.